Okay, we're here with our uh, nutshell pram. Excuse me, we're working on the uh, coatings today, and by coatings, we include paint and varnish. Putting on some uh, Kirby Maynard Gray off-white at the top side paint, and we're rolling and tipping. Let's see. Oh boy, the brush fell down. Oh no, I might get paint on myself. Plan on it. So for rolling, we buy the little mighty many roller kit from Jamestown Distributors. It comes with two of the foam roller covers, the frame and the little pan, and they are very handy and very inexpensive. It's a good roller in the size and the nap, and um, by nap, you need to be worried about what your roller's made out of. If it's made out of the wrong stuff, you can uh, get about halfway into your paint and the roller starts dissolving and coming off in your paint job, and that's no fun, so ask me how I know about that. So we're gonna roll the paint on with that. You're gonna tip it with this uh, fancy uh, Valspar brush we bought from Lowe's. It's for oil stains, but it's got the best, little smooth, this little bristles that he has. And when we're done with it, we can toss it in the trash if we want. And uh, so we're gonna roll and tip. Or it should be tip and roll, because uh, what we need to do first is get just a little bit of paint on the end, dab it off. And this bucket is graduated down so it's deeper here. So find a little place in your paint tray that where you can get about that much paint on it. We're gonna back you up to the boat here. And on a lap strake boat, one of the first things we do when we're painting is we'll come in and where'd we leave off at? And we'll get this uh, we'll get this seam for the next section. Get you a little better shot there. The next section that we're going to roll, we also like to come a little bit up onto the plank. Man, that was a little bit dry. I'm not getting much paint off of there, so let's walk back over here. Maybe not dab off quite as much this time. Get the seam, because the roller won't get in here. Plus, you can just get better coverage with the brush. We come a little bit up onto the plank because when we're rolling back and forth, that roller tip may or may not get down into that last little bit there. And we do about as far as we think we can do with the next little bit on the roller. Today with these temps and how we've thinned it, we think we can go about on this uh, skinnier plank up here, we could go about two feet at a time, roll it and then feather it back in. Down here, it's getting a little wider. So we'll probably do about a, a foot and a half and uh, let's see if I can put a big X on there. So know about how far I'm gonna go and I can uh, put this camera down so it's not shaking. We'll spin you around. Everybody look up, come around the shop, look outside, say hi to Smedley over there. Tom, Tom says hi Smedley. Come back down to the paint and the uh, fancy uh, camera stand in the paint. We poured out about a third of this can, and then what George recommends is then you pour in enough of your conditioner to cover the top of what you pour into your cup. In this case, we're using a free cup from a Total Boat. And so I thought, well, that doesn't seem like enough thinner to just cover. It's like, well, when you pour it in, some of it doesn't stay on the top. It goes down on in below the top of the uh, paint you have in there. So conditioner on top of the paint, and eventually you kind of see it it just kind of fills up over and it covers the top. So we stopped there and we had a good consistency that we liked. We could see it mixed it up, kind of see it streaming off the end of the paint stick. Poured it in the pan and it's uh, rolling and tipping pretty good. Today it's probably, what's the mom saying? It's about 82 out here. Humidity's not bad. It's actually humidity and not tropicality. So we're uh, pretty real happy with how this paint's going on. Let's see where my axe go. Gotta make sure we get you in the shot. Oh, there's my finger. Let's see where my finger is now. So we'll try to get this, try not to block the shot when I'm up there, but you know, like I said yesterday, you get what you pay for. Of course, we do have a Patreon account. If you wanna pay us, you know, we can still make these amateur videos and take Patreon money, but uh, we don't need to. We appreciate all the tips everyone's given us in the past. They haven't. 
charge us anything. So you can either look at our video and go, hey, I want to do it that way. Or you can look at our video and say, man, I'd never paint a boat like that. So either way, you're covered. So one of the things we do, you can't see it down here. We've got a little uh, card table that's all covered with paint and epoxy. And we put our paint tray on there. And uh, we just slide it around the boat with us so we're not moving back and forth to where the paint tray is. You know, there's not many places to put a, uh, a paint tray on this boat. So you fall around. So, oh no, my brush fell in the paint again. So we've already dredged the seam, I call it. And now I've noticed uh, some of the problems you may see. Come up. I saw a little drip here. Go ahead and knock that drip down now. Because by the time I get around to that, it may be a blob that's, I've got to scrape it off or do something else with it, and I don't want to do that. And then uh, one method we've tried is for planking is like to start at one end and do it down each plank and feather in, feather in, and you can do it that way. So lately what we've been doing is we'll just do a plank at a time and then drag the table back and do another plank. Also, which way do you go? Well, ever, whichever way you want to go. Today, because I like to feather the paint in with my right hand going this way instead of trying to backhand it, I feel like I have more control over the brush. So I'm going to roll it and then I'm going to feather it back in to the wet paint back here. And we'll keep this wet edge as we go. So the wet edge is here now. When I get done in a minute, wet edge will probably be around here. So let's talk more painting. So I'm mean, just lightly putting this paint on the roller. I'm not mashing down. And that's the same way I'm gonna put the paint on. And for me, when I paint, it also matters which way this roller flame frame is turned. Because if I'm going to go down like this, for some reason I put more pressure on this corner of the roller and there's sometimes a line and lighter pressure up here. So here we go. And this is just fingertip pressure. This is not, this is not Marine Corps pressure, even though that's how I started dot painting. Got over the wet edge here. Now I'll use the roller to feather also. So come in and just lift it off. Because if you mash it back and forth and back and forth, you get paint buildup on either, either end there. And if it dries too fast, then you're going to have to deal with that. Now to feather, I just dip this, like I showed you earlier, get a little bit of paint so that I know the tips, the tips are wet, and come in and just uh, come across. And what we're doing is the roller leaves some little bumps. We're just making them all smooth. And now the best thing to do is leave it alone, go away, so that paint can do its uh, self-leveling leveling thing. This is the first coat of paint. So over some primer. So we're expecting to be able to see through the paint to the primer below, so we won't get full coverage on the on a, on a first coat. I'm gonna come dredge the seam again. Bring the line up onto the hole a little bit. You might think, well, now I'm mashing the brush and pulling it. Well, most part, I'm gonna be covering it with the roller here in just seconds later, so. Not too worried about that. Now you can start judging how much paint, how much of an area to cover by how your, uh, you can see how the roller's covering. You can listen to how it's covering. If it starts down and sticky, well it's sticky, you need to add more conditioner. So what do we say, see it, hear it. You can also feel it. That's the basics of rolling and tipping as we know it. Oops, got to do my little, little bit more machine. Now the planks get a little wider, so I'll do a little, probably going out of the shot. I'll do a little bit bigger, uh, or a little bit smaller section. If you have the perfect, perfect paint mixture on a perfect day, and you can just roll 20 feet 
So you may not want to roll 20 feet. You might want to think about ergonomics and only roll as far as your hand can reach because you don't want to, once you start this tip, you want to, you want to end the stroke by lightly lifting the brush off and feathering it. You don't want to start here and then start here. Anyway, but. So once again, I can see, yeah, it's a little thin there, but it, I can feel it. I can feel the brush drag a little bit. I can hear it. I can taste it. No, I don't. Don't taste the paint. And go from there. So what else, uh, what other things happen? So sometimes when you're doing the seam, you get a little run. We showed you that earlier, a drip. Wipe it down early. This, this will still be tacky enough when I come back. The paint will blend into that just fine. And, uh, but if it were the blob, I'd have to do with that. Oh, I know what I want to try to show you. See if it works out or not. Let's see if we can get a close-up of why we're, why we're tipping. Do a small section here. You'll come in and pick up the camera. Let's see if it shows up. Get the little it will vary so it doesn't look too bad actually I might actually who knows not actually be taking the not actually be taking the fun out of it by going back with the brush so different paints different days sometimes there's more of that texture sticking up than I talk about so we're once again we're starting out here on the dry edge going over the wet edge once you've gone over it about twice or so, then you've you've done enough. You've done your duty. It's time to move on to the next bit. But you want to keep this edge down here wet because if it gets hard, you'll see a lump under there on your next coat of paint. And uh, just just keep moving, keep the paint flowing well. Uh, balance the paint with your conditioner to get what you want. I think George said you could probably go up to about a third or so of conditioner. Two thirds paint, and uh, you do more than that, then you're putting on more thinner than your paint. But there's a uh, solvents in the paint that flash off. So one of the things I did early on was I had issues with putting on too much paint, and I would just end up with a gummy paint job. It's like it would never dry. And some of that was environment. Some of that was something else. But uh, most of it was me just trying to mop the paint on. So. That's what, uh, so just thin coats, plan on at least two, possibly three. Uh, that's assuming you've done at least one coat of primer, maybe two. And it used to be that primer was a lot cheaper than paint. So you can sit there and prime, a little bit of sanding, prime again, and uh, get a nice smooth base built up instead of trying to build that up with your paint. Because the primer is thicker than paint. Some folks sell a primer that's designed for uh, surfacing. In other words, your surface is already nice and smooth. And so you can just buy that. Uh, some of the folks, uh, the name rhymes with Total Boat. Like have a two-part epoxy. And George probably has a similar product that's uh, for surfacing. Meaning you're ready to paint. And other folks sell a... A primer that has more solids in it and a lot of times you'll hear the term high build meaning you want to build up that surface and take out the hills and valleys with some some uh, primer versus seeing the hills and valleys after you paint so you can buy that type also oh well a little magic light went off let's see if i can wave and go hello light i'm still in here i guess i wasn't moving around enough up oh, back on so let's see what else. Sanding, this primer was really smooth. 
when they came out, but I could feel just running the hand over it, feel a few bumps. So I took uh, 320 grit, just went over as light as I could just to knock down a couple little dust bunnies that had landed in the paint and uh, got it smooth. I have been known to prime sand, prime sand, prime sand, prime sand until Skipper finally comes out and says, you know, stop sanding, start painting. So it comes down to what kind of paint job you want. You're gonna be out sailing or rowing or paddling or sculling or ulowing or motoring or punting or whatever you do in your boat. You're gonna be out several hundred yards offshore. Are the, are the people gonna know? You've got a mirror glass finish on your boat. Are the fish gonna care? So the, uh, the standard we go for is what's called the galloping horse standard where if someone, if you're out rowing your nutshell pram around and someone rode by on shore on a galloping horse and they glanced over at you, would they notice that there was a little dimple in the paint or maybe a little blob of epoxy that you left? The answer is no, they would not. So that's criteria Skipper's uh, grandma set up for her years ago and we go by it. We also go by the uh, Great Spirit criteria that only the Great Spirit can make something perfect. So don't put a perfect paint job on your boat. Make sure you that a bug lands in it right as you're finished for the day. And then, you know, just leave it there or something. Or the last criteria is Captain Jack's criteria is like, if they don't like it, they don't get to go. So someone comes up and starts picking on your pram paint job, then you can, uh, if you row far enough away, you won't hear them anymore. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's, uh, those are some criteria so you don't get hung up on, oh no, I see a little pinhole or there's a, oh look right there, there's a, there's a divot right there. Man, what am I gonna do about that? I probably should just scrap the whole boat and start over. But uh, guess what? When it rides to the beach on the trailer or on top of your car or in the back of your pickup or it gets towed behind your Hershoff yacht, it's, uh, it's gonna take some it's gonna take some damage, and that's and that's that's where the stories come in. That's where the fun is. Is uh, oh yeah, I had my beautiful thwarts cut out. Then I was looking for a flat surface to cut out another board, and thought, well, I can use the thwarts as a, to put this board on and cut, and then find out that, oops, I cut into my beautiful new thwarts that I made for my Penobscot. That may have happened to someone we know. Someone may have done that. So. Hope y'all are having fun out there, and uh, if you've got suggestions on things we can do different or better or that you like, please post them because, you know, a bunch of people, at least three or four, look at these videos, and they may get some ideas and share their ideas, and that's, that's what it's all about, exchanging knowledge. So I hope y'all are having a great weekend. Uh, I'm a Texas Longhorn graduate. I just watched them almost beat Alabama. But we'll, uh, I think the fifth quarter's getting ready to start. So I'm gonna finish up this painting and go back inside and see if the Longhorns can mount a comeback in the fifth quarter. That about does it.